Derek, let's start off with uh, Prince William. Happy and news. He's there filling in for his father at Windsor Castle with an investiture. And uh, following that, I understand he's doing a speech at London's Air Ambulance Gala Dinner. Yes, so back to work for Prince William today for the first time since his wife, uh, Kate, went into hospital for abdominal surgery. Uh, carrying out that investiture at Windsor Castle, just a short distance from their home at Adelaide Cottage. Uh, but this evening he's going to be in central London at Raffles Hotel and he is going to be giving a speech at the London Air Ambulance Charity Gala. And in that speech, while he wants the focus to be on the charity, he will also acknowledge, we understand, his father's cancer diagnosis and thank people, uh, the public, for their support. He recognises that there is a huge amount of interest in this story and so I think it's highly likely that we will see him acknowledge that in the speech uh, tonight. As for what's next for the Prince of Wales, we don't really know at this stage but we do know that he is going to have to step up and fill in on a lot of those public duties now that his father is uh, uh, taking a bit of a step back from the public role at least. Uh, let's talk about Harry, uh, Sarah. You know, I mean, there's been lots of, oh, it's fantastic, you know, he's back with the king, he saw him, he saw his dear old dad last night, his dad's suffering from cancer. I think if you look at the picture, this guy flies 11... And by the way, credit to Harry for dropping everything and flying to see his stricken father. You know, uh, but credit to him for that. Uh, but the reception, to say it's been lukewarm... Uh, is the exaggeration of the century. The guy comes here, he, he, he goes to see his dad. 30 minutes later, uh, Charles and Camilla are in a helicopter flying to Sandringham. William lets it be known he's not going to see him. And we understand that Harry may well be flying back later today, having been consigned to a hotel last night and not given any royal residence. I think this is the royal family saying, the way you've been behaving for the last three years, uh, you are not forgiven. Thank you for coming. Now go home. Look, I think this is not a time for judgment on either side. Look, Harry flew here to support his father, absolutely doing the right thing. We understand from reports in The Sun today that the King actually delayed his departure to Sandringham in order to welcome his son. They had a meeting at Clarence House. And the briefing from Royal Aids is that it may have been a relatively short uh, meeting, but the King was feeling pretty tired after a procedure that he underwent. He hasn't seen him since the coronation, Monday. Sarah. Well, I mean, 30 I minutes, say, Kevin, 30 we, minutes. We weren't in the room. Look, there's an awful lot of speculation that goes on. We weren't in the room. We don't know whether that meeting was warm or not. The King's just been diagnosed with cancer. I agree he hasn't seen him since the coronation, but we don't know what that conversation was like. And we also don't know whether there are further plans for a further meeting at some point or conversations. I would like to see this in a positive way as a starting point, an olive branch. Certainly he was welcomed into Clarence House. He was given uh, the full security treatment that he has talked about needing so much coming from Heathrow Airport absolutely did the right thing coming to see his father and any one of us would. Yes, it was perhaps a shorter meeting than we on the outside might have liked to see, but we just don't know what is going on behind uh, closed doors. We do doors. know we one don't... thing, though, Sarah. We do know one thing. William is still seethingly furious yeah. with his brother and will not see him. I mean, this is a cold reception this guy has received, having flown 11 hours, uh, no doubt hoping for some kind of family re reunion. We were all hoping for a rapprochement. It hasn't happened. Yeah, and I think maybe it was wishful thinking on all of our yeah, parts, wasn't I agree with it? That. Um, much as when we saw them out on the long walk at Windsor after the Queen's death. All hope that was going to be, you know, snap your fingers and everything's better. <laughs> Clearly, it's not going to be healed that quickly. Uh, the Prince of Wales, no plans uh, to meet up with his brother. Looking at it in the cold light of day, he has got an awful lot else going on at the moment with caring for his wife uh, and his children, as well as taking on his father's duties. That's absolutely his priority uh, now. Um, I think we all feel that we would have liked to see this reconciliation, but maybe it's the public wanting it more than those that are actually involved in this uh, right now. And there is a big issue of trust. And 
there will be, and perhaps this is one chance to, to start healing. If Prince Harry goes back to California and none of the conversations that have taken place over the past 24 hours end up being briefed out to sources in the media, then perhaps that might be the start of further conversations. But at the moment, there is a big issue of trust. They're very wary yeah. uh, about the kind of conversations they have and what is revealed and whether it's going to end up in the public domain. I mean, Sarah, I'm interested, actually, that you picked up on something that I observed the other day, which is when we did see those pictures of Prince Harry arriving, um, we did see, of course, a police escort, something that he had been fighting in court to try and get. Uh, so that's an indication, I think, to some degree, that there might have been a, a little bit of give and take on his father's side. But we don't yet know how long Harry's going to be in the country, do we? No, but I think Harry's arrival would all have been coordinated with the palace. So he then became part of that bigger royals protection uh, scenario. That's the thing that he's been arguing for. He's continuing to argue for uh, with the Home Office. He has been told that he needs to give 28 days notice if he and his family want to have their security uh, detail reviewed by the Home Office when they return. But obviously, in this case, it was an emergency. He was coming under special circumstances and it was given the green light by the palace. So I think we can see that, you know, very much Prince Charles was wanting his son to come back and wanting to smooth the path uh, for that. King Charles, rather, I should say, uh, smooth the path uh, for that. But it is certainly a big issue for Harry and a battle that he's continuing to fight. I mean, I don't want to undermine. Obviously, the king's uh, very sick at the moment. And perhaps, he, as you say, Sarah, he was exhausted. But uh, I'm sorry, I still find it astonishing. 30 minutes, 11 hours he flew. Uh, 30 minutes, not given a royal residence, uh, and now he's going to fly back. Uh, so uh, let's hope that relations get warmer between the entire family. But uh, let's talk about William, as you uh, nicely outlaid earlier. Uh, he's already thrusting himself into duties. Uh, there was a piece, I think, in the Mail uh, this morning uh, saying that uh, the burden on William now will be immense. He was expecting the next few months until Easter, to be a light time in terms of royal duties because he was going to be looking after his wife and the kids. Instead, uh, he's working harder than ever. So there, it is a big uh, burden on his shoulders, isn't it? Yeah, and look, if you think, just back 18 months ago, he was second in line to the throne. His destiny seemed a long way off, didn't it? But now, with, you know, his father's illness and that put someone's mortality into sharp focus, doesn't it? And you can only imagine the thoughts that are going through uh, the Prince of Wales's head right now about what his future holds and when that might be. Look, we know that the King is wholly optimistic about his treatment and we all hope that he makes a full recovery. But Prince William is already going to have to step up and take on greater responsibilities at what is, as you described there, Kevin, a really, really difficult time mm -hmm. uh, when he should have been taking a bit more time out or wanted to, certainly, a bit more time out. And he and Kate had a plan that they want to give their kids as much normality as possible and protect them uh, from uh, the future for as long as they possibly can while also preparing them for it, but they're being propelled closer and closer to it. I think an interesting thing that's come out is the fact that we've learnt that uh, King Charles will have his weekly audience with the Prime Minister by telephone, not by Zoom conference call or, or, or similar, uh, which to me suggests quite how gruelling this medical intervention may be. Yeah, potentially, although I guess the king is quite old school yeah, uh, as well he as is. some regards, <laughs> um, Alex. So um, it may be that he is more comfortable in that, although we certainly saw the late queen embracing uh, video call uh, during the COVID period, didn't we? So uh, that uh, weekly meeting, look, that's going to be under review uh, as well. So there may be times we're told, I think we're getting into a pattern where the king is going to return to London for his treatment and then he will head back to the countryside to San. Uh, as he has done this week, and then back to London again uh, for treatment, but also some areas of business. So there may be some of those meetings that take place uh, in person in Buckingham Palace, depending on how the King is feeling, but others will take place by telephone or by video call at the Privy Council meetings likewise. Sarah, thank you ever Thanks, so Sarah. much. Thank you so much for the update. Reem, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, during the latter stages of the Queen's life, the, the palace are incredibly controlled about the images that they released of the Queen. And I remember when we all saw that picture of her meeting Liz Truss, who had just become 
Prime Minister. I think we all thought, well, doesn't she look quite, doesn't she look very sweet, but doesn't she look quite small and quite old? And of course, it was uh, moments in time, really, before she tragically passed away. I would imagine that the palace also wants to maintain that sort of dignity and decorum around the king as he goes through this treatment. They definitely have, but they have also been incredibly honest. I, th I think this is definitely coming from the king himself. The honesty around uh, his diagnosis, the honesty to the public around the difficulties that, that this kind of of cancer really does have the toll that it takes on on him as an individual and I think it's really wonderful to see I think it first of all the the awareness that it provides for prostate cancer for no, many actually, people he hasn't got prostate cancer. sorry which cancer does he he's have got, no that, 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 that's why he has you know he's been half transparent he said I've got cancer uh, they've the palace have stressed it's not prostate okay, cancer sorry. after his enlarged prostate problems last week uh, but they have not specified okay. which cancer it is. so I would say yes I think it's a good thing he's done but it's only half transparency and uh, speculation is still rife what kind of cancer mm. it is I can't quite understand if you're going to say I've got cancer why not say what type yeah but I do so we have seen I think it was prostate cancers um, checks that have increased significantly mm. after yeah, no, 600 percent so, so after the king's uh, announcement I, I, I do think that that is a positive yeah, agree, step in itself even if, even if they haven't specified specifically what kind of cancer he has, that is again his, his own private, mm -hmm. uh, pri private uh, right to, to do yes, that. Yes. But I think it's brilliant that they've been able to do that. Again, this entire situation with Prince Harry, I think, is really tragic. We do want—I mean, everybody wants to see the family come together and and, and, and make amends. But ultimately, can you hardly can you blame them for not wanting the, the Prince Harry to come back to Buckingham Palace and stay a, with them? Absolutely, I think it's a real indication of just how deep these wounds are mm. that Harry has inflicted. We know what he's been up to his behavior was unconscionable you know the interview with Oprah Winfrey mm. that awful mm. spiteful book you know calling Camilla the villain of the, the story. Netflix series uh, the Netflix series you it know his behavior on. is on. unforgiving and they've, of work. but they've forgiven him time and time but again not this time not this time not they've this time. finally put their foot down and said you cannot treat the royal no. family this way I know and I, you know as Sarah Houston quite rightly said we don't know what happened in that meeting and I'm sure Harry and Dad, uh, you know, it was a nice meeting and all that, but uh, the brevity of it, I think, speaks volumes.